Welcome to all of you. In this lecture, we will define the normalizer of a subgroup. We will discuss its property and we will see its relation with the conjugacy class of subgroup. So, suppose S is a subgroup of G, then this subgroup may not be a normal subgroup of G. But one thing you can see that this subgroup will be normal in itself by the definition of normal subgroup. Now the question is that, is there any another subgroup K such that H is normal in K although it may happen that K is not normal in G. So the question is that, is there any another subgroup K which contains H as a normal subgroup. So suppose there is 1K, then what will be the property of that K? By the definition, since H is normal in K, so KH will be equal to HK for all K in K. But one thing you can see that, Always there is at least one K and that K is H itself. Because if you replace this K by H, then this subgroup will have this property. So at least one K is there which has this property. So if it is so, then we know the smallest one, but we want to know the largest one. So which subgroup is the largest subgroup having this property and that subgroup is called the normalizer subgroup. So but one thing you can note that if there is such a largest subgroup then if you take the element of that largest subgroup then the elements of that largest subgroup will again satisfy this equation. So why not we collect all those elements of G which satisfies this equation. So, so we are going to collect all these elements, all those elements C and G such that GS is equal to HG and we call this set as the normalizer of H. We denote it as NHG. So, one thing you can see because H satisfies this property elements of S satisfy this property, so H will always be inside this normalizer H. Because H is inside this normalizer H, so normalizer of H is non-empty. Now we are going to show that this normalizer of H will be a, no, will be a subgroup of G. So take an element G in this normalizer of H. Then because G is in normalizer of H, so GH is equal to HG. So it simply means that GH inverse is equal to GH inverse. How will you get it? You will take this C this side. Means simply you will multiply G inverse on both the side. G inverse on both the side. So you will get this. And simply you multiply, also multiply G inverse here and here. So G and G inverse will give you identity. This will cancel and give you identity. So you will have HG inverse is equal to G inverse H. So it simply means that G inverse belongs to the normalizer of H. Now take two elements G1, G2 in normalizer of H. Then GIH is equal to HGI for all I. This is by the definition of normalizer. So suppose I take G1, G2 of H. Then G1, G2 of H can be written as G1, HG2 by this. So it can also be written as now H G1 G2. So it simply means that G1 G2 also belongs to the normalizer of H. So by the subgroup test, normalizer of H is now a subgroup of G. Now because for each element of the normalizer, this identity is true. NH is equal to HN. So it simply means that H is normal in normalizer of H. So H is a normal 
subgroup of normalizer fetch. Now suppose n is any subgroup of G such that H is normal in N. Then what will happen by the definition of normality? NH is equal to HN for all N in N. So it means N belongs to the normalizer of H by the definition of normalizer of H. So it means capital N is contained in normalizer of H. So you may say that whenever H is normal in some subgroup, then that subgroup will be contained inside normalizer of H. So normalizer of H is the largest subgroup of G in which H is normal. So normalizer of H is the largest subgroup of G in which H is normal. But normalizer of H need not be a normal subgroup of G. It may be normal in some cases, but it is not necessary that it is always normal. Also, if H is normal in G, then all the elements of G will satisfy this property that GH is equal to HG. So the normalizer of H will become equal to G. Also, normalizer of H may not be equal to H. So we are going to give example for this. Let us see. Suppose I take G to be S3 and H is one subgroup identity 1, 2 and K is another subgroup identity 1, 2, 3 and 1, 3, 2. Then the normalizer of H in G is those G in G such that GH is equal to GH inverse. So if we take this G this side, then GH G inverse is equal to H. You may also write it like this. But, but as you can see, that when you will take GH G inverse, then H has two element. One is identity and one is 1, 2. So identity will come here and G 1, 2 and G inverse will be the another element. So for which G this set is equal to H, this is the problem. So identity will remain itself and G 1, 2 G inverse will become 1, 2 means G is the cent element of centralizer of 1, 2. And we know that centralizer has only two element identity and 1, 2. So this normalizer of H will have only one element, will have this only two elements identity and 1, 2, which is equal to H itself. If you have a confusion, then you can calculate it by the definition. So you put all the elements of S3 and calculate for which elements this is fixed. So you can see that you will only get only two elements, identity and 1, 2. So it means the normalizer of H in G is H itself and H is not normal in S3. Similarly for the another subgroup if you will determine, then the normalizer of K in G will turn out to be the whole S3 because K is a normal subgroup. So as we can see that the normalizer of H may not be normal in S3 in this example. And we have also seen that the normalizer of H in G is may be equal to H. And in this example, normalizer of K in G is the whole S3. Now we will see the relation between the normalizer of H in G and the centralizer, sorry, the conjugacy class of H in G. So if you see the lecture group action 4, after 15 minutes, we have proved that the conjugacy class of H in G, the order of conjugacy class of H in G is equal to the order of G upon the order of normalizer of H in G where G is a finite group. If you remember from the previous lecture, the conjugacy class of H in G is the set of subgroups of this form. But as we have seen that normalizer is also a subgroup. So order of G upon normalizer of H in G means the index of normalizer of H in G. So we can say that the index of normalizer of H in G is equal to 
द नंबर ऑफ कॉन्जुगेट्स ऑफ एच इन जी विच इज ए फाइनाइट ग्रुप सो थैंक यू वेरी मच इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द नॉर्मल नॉर्मल क्लोजर ऑफ ए सब ग्रुप